Guys, let's go. Uh, welcome in here, Kurt Magoo Sports. We are back and uh, uploading another video tonight. Uh, this video is about this video is about um, the head football coach at the University of Oregon, Dan Lanning. Uh, very exciting hire, thirty-five years old, um, going out to Oregon. Um, you know, now AD Rob Mullins, he was pretty stunned by the sudden departure of um, Mario Cristobal to the University of Miami, and this seat has been um, quickly awarded to Dan Lanning. Uh, Chip Kelly was in the mix as well, which, you know, would have made a lot of sense considering Chip was there um, for really uh, the longest time uh, in Eugene, uh, probably a decade. But Dan Lanning, uh, let let's get into uh, let's get into this hire. Um, Georgia defensive coordinator Dan Lanning, um, and so Georgia's defense this year it's historic. It's an unbelievable defense. You have Jordan Davis. You have guys in the middle of the defense. The front seven's unbelievable. It's a great, great defense uh, at the University of Georgia. Dan Lanning has also worked under Nick Saban um, as a grad assistant uh, under Nick Saban. And after Mel Tucker got the Colorado head coaching job, um, Dan Lanning then was able to become a co-defensive coordinator and inside linebacker coach. Now, we'll get to the pros and cons of Lanning right here, all right? So, Dan Lanning. Let's look up again where Dan Lanning was. So, Lanning's a cool guy, all right? He just... He's a cool guy, all right? He was born in Kansas City, Missouri, went to a small town, a small college in Missouri called William Jewell, all right? Like I said, he's 35 years old, but he's a Missouri guy, all right? He's from Kansas City, or I guess you could say Kansas or Missouri. He then was a head coach, or he wasn't even a head coach. He was an assistant special teams coach for Park Hill South High School. Now, the craziest thing, about this story is that Todd Graham, who Dan Lanning basically, um, Todd Graham was a coach at Arizona State for a very long time. He's right now the head coach of Hawaii. Todd Graham, he met at a, um, he met Todd Graham in, I believe, 20, was it 2011? Yeah, he met Todd Graham um, in 2011. And basically, but it wasn't just 2011, he went to his coaching clinic for three years, all right? Like, you know, those coaching clinics, those Glazer or Nike coaching clinics, which I'm going to try to go to, he made connections with Todd Graham. And when Todd Graham became the head coach of Pitt in 2011, you heard this too with David Rice, uh, or David Reese, uh, I guess Race, the offensive coordinator at Vanderbilt, drove 13 hours to Lubbock to meet Cliff Kingsbury. Well, this is a rags to riches sort of story. Well, not really rags because he was still coaching in high school, which is awesome. But a 13-hour drive landed him at the doorstep of Graham. And eventually Graham gave in and gave Dan Landing his opportunity as a grad assistant. So he was a grad assistant. At Arizona State in Pittsburgh, because because uh, Graham fought highly enough of Landing to take him to Arizona State. So then at Arizona State, he of course met into Mike Norvell, and Mike Norvell then was the Memphis coach. He was an Alabama grad assistant. He also worked at Sam Houston State, and Sam Houston State, uh, he was a defensive backs coach there and a recruiting coordinator. So Sam Houston State is of course the pinnacle for FCS football, them and the and the Bison. So all he's been around is success. Nick Saban, Sam Houston State, Mike Norvell, and then he was at Georgia. He was hired then as the outside linebacking coach at Georgia, and then when Mel Tucker moved on, Kirby fought high enough of him to make him defensive coordinator. So Dan Lanning, he could be a potential star. He's just like Mike McDonald, you know, um, 35-year-old guy, 
and uh, obviously has been instrumental in leading this incredible, incredible defense at the University of Georgia. Um, He also was a linebacker coach for Memphis, so he's been around Kirby. He's seen it up close and personal. You look at Nick Saban and that 2015 staff, I believe you might have had Brian Dable there, but you had Billy Napier, who was also younger there. Um, You had Lane Kiffin on that staff. Um, Who else did you have? Mel Tucker. Um, Kirby Smart, I think that they were all on Nick Saban's 2015 Alabama staff. So pretty crazy to see where everything ends up with Dan Lanning. So what is Lanning going to bring to the table? Well, one, he must be a tremendous personality and an interviewer because Todd Graham kept him along. He kept that relationship with Mike Norvell. He's climbed the ladder quickly, and Kirby Smart entrusted Dan Lanning with this defense, okay? So he has the coaching staff's trust. He's been around the best, Sam Houston, Alabama, and the University of Georgia. So he's worked on the defensive side of the ball. I believe that the recruiting will be really good at Oregon. It's also shouldn't be that expensive. This guy is 35 years old. He's never been a head coach before. Um, he, he's a decently hot commodity, but not the hottest of hot commodities in terms of the coaching world. And since Oregon has had Willie Taggart, Mario Cristobal, Mark Helfridge, they fired so many coaches in a short period of time. They're not looking to allocate a tremendous amount of money. And that's even what Chip Kelly would have costed. Um, Uh, considering Chip's resume. Why is there a worry about Dan Lanning? There's several worries about Lanning. He's at the University of Georgia under Kirby Smart. So how could you... How it's hard to mess up that defense when you have Kirby Smart. Now, Lanning's elevated it, but is it Kirby or is it Dan Lanning, right? Um, th- that's a question mark. He worked under Nick Saban. He's, never, he's only been a defensive coordinator for one year, all right? And he was a co-defensive coordinator. He's never really led his side of the ball. He's never, you know, really um, built a program, or he's never really been in program building before. Um, it's not like he's the, the real extensive defensive coordinator. It's it's not like Jeff Lebby. Jeff Lebby works with Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. It's not like Jeff Lebby led an offense. It's not like Dan Lanning is pulling the strings on defense. It's Kirby and it's Will Muschamp that are pulling the strings. Even though Muschamp is a, uh, what is it called, an associate head coach and an analyst, I mean, Will Muschamp's going to have input on that side of the ball. And Will Muschamp's one of the great defensive coordinators. So you can look at that as a positive in that he gets to interact with these guys. Or you can view that as a big-time negative in that this guy hasn't come up with his own ideas yet. He hasn't come out and, like, tried it. Like, say he went to an offensively driven place like a Mike Norvell at Florida State or say that he was at Ole Miss and then he was rocking on defense – That's something to consider. But this guy's fought very highly in the coaching world. Again, I think he's a really good person. Um, I think his recruiting is is excellent. Uh, He he gets guys to the draft, and he could sell that he worked at Georgia. Again, for Oregon, you take a shot on a young kind of coach. Your program's in decent shape. Um, but again, it was late in the hiring process. I don't know if they, if they went after Aranda, um, I'm trying to think of, of, of other hires that would have made sense for Oregon. I mean, you do look at Chip Kelly, um, but Dan Lanning put it this way. I think it is a decent, decent move. Now, I think it could, it could also backfire. I mean, there's a question mark that it could backfire. I look at the guy um, at Fresno State did really well. Jay Norvell would have been very interesting at Oregon. I mean, Jay Norvell built Nevada into a powerhouse. The San Jose State head coach, um, Brennan, would, you know, he's built that program too as a head coach. You even look at Will Healy. Jamie Chadwell. These are head coaches that have built it. So I would have had several guys over Dan Lanning, starting with Dave Aranda. Uh, even Mike Gundy would have pref- probably been interested because this is the University of Oregon. This is the home of Nike. This is a very, very, uh, with NIL and your ability to make money off of Nike, to make money off of the brand, this is a place that's an absolute powerhouse and it's maybe the best job. I think it's the best job in the Pac-12 and they, and they take on Dan Lanning. This guy is, again, no head coaching experience, was a defensive coordinator for all these guys. Now, I can assure you there's one guy who helped Dan Lanning get the job. It's Mel Tucker. 
Mel Tucker's immediately from the Saban and Kirby tree. Mel Tucker was also the defensive coordinator at Georgia. He was at Colorado for one year. Then the pandemic hit, and he was and he went to his dream school, Michigan State. And the pandemic was tough, and he ha- he had to rebuild from a program that. Listen, even though um, Mark D'Antonio is probably one of the greatest coaches in Spartan history, the recruiting had gotten weak the last couple of years there. And then he basically got transfer portal guys and made it into a powerhouse, made it awesome. You look at the defense at Oregon, it can be great. You look at somebody that can that can adapt to the landscape that's 35, can adapt to athletes, and can adapt to the ever-changing landscape of conference realignment and NIL, it's Dan Lanning. I think Dan Lanning's a decent hire. I would land in the C to C-plus category. I'm looking at, if I had to analyze the hiring circle right now, Brent Venables gets an A-plus from me. Uh, Joey McGuire is actually going to be an A-plus. And again, if Joey McGuire, Sam Pittman, then that's honestly an A-plus for Texas Tech. Um, looking at uh, other jobs, Mike Elko is pretty solid. I'd give Elko like a B minus. Uh, but Dan Lanning, I think it could be either a B minus or a C plus. But again, you're really taking a risk, and it's just what is your cup of tea in this capacity? Um, Mike McDonald, even I think, is even more impressive what he's done at Michigan. I even think Jim Leonard stacks up really well with Dan Lanning. Uh, but it's just the SEC. I don't think Oregon did that for all of a coaching search here I'm going to be honest with y'all so I do have a lot of questions again but I'm happy for Dan Lanning um, his work ethic I'm sure he's a great guy and just kind of really evaluating uh, this hire uh, I think it's a tough hire for Oregon where they were left in the in the search but in fairness it's also not tough because they can go out and look to try to to find whoever they could um, but Looking at the hiring cir- cycle, um, I believe Pry is actually very interesting. I said Joey McGuire was, you know, a really good hire. Um, I think Marcus Freeman's going to end up being elite as an elite level hire. Uh, LSU is okay. Billy Napier. I think LSU and Florida are actually in the C minus category. I don't really like Napier at Florida. Kelly at LSU is okay. I actually think Lanning could be towards the top of the list. But but again, my two guys are Venables and probably Joey McGuire and Freeman are my favorite hires of the cycle. Um, and I'm happy that Aranda stayed at Ole Miss. Or excuse me, at Baylor. Uh, Jeff Levy is a big-time hire. Um, so again, this is a, you know, for Dan, this is tremendous. His ability to recruit, I'm going to kick it up to like a B-minus hire. Um, There's so many question marks, though, how he's going to do with this program. Um, There's probably more qualified guys of resumes, but, hey, some of those guys like a Dom Brown or some of those older coaches, like even John Chavis has more on his resume. Who cares? As long as Dan Lanning is a stud, uh, can adapt, um, I think that they're taking a swing, and it's exciting for Oregon. This is a, this is a, a an exciting splash hire. This is a splash hire for Oregon, but there is a lot of risk built into this hire. And with the expectations of Oregon, kind of who they could have gotten, I would have maybe chose more of a head coach that's really proven on offense and a head coach that's like really, um, really, really good, like like Mike Gundy or somebody that immediately is like a shoe and let's roll with Oregon. But again, this has a chance to work. You recruit really well. You play on defense. The offensive coordinator is obviously going to be a huge decision. It's a younger hire, but it's the first big job, and it, it's it's a pretty damn big leap going to Oregon because I view Oregon pretty highly. So I express my concerns, but I also express what I like about Dan Lanning and his expertise on defense and his mentorship and him driving 13 hours to get the job is, is tremendous. And Dan Dan's personality in the interview, as an AD, you want, you want a guy you can work with and who matches your values, and I'm sure Dan Lanning earned it, and he did it. He's, he's a really good defensive coordinator, Georgia is elite, and it's fair to say Dan Lanning can be the head coach now at the University of Oregon. So that's it, Danny Lanning, Oregon.